Aviva System Platform 2023 focuses on market requirements, customer feedback, and of course, improved user experience. Let's take a look at some of the great new features we have. First up, the new and refreshed user interface. In System Platform 2023, the IDE has been completely revamped. At the top, you'll find a convenient ribbon bar that's easy to use, and you can even set it to a simplified ribbon bar if you want to have a little bit more space. There's also a backstage available in the Galaxy menu where you can create new galaxies, connect to different servers, and you can pin your galaxies so that you can easily find them. You can also configure aspects of the Galaxy, things like element style, security, and the likes in there. We've also completely revamped the help file system to get rid of the dependency on Internet Explorer 11, and you can now use modern browsers like Edge and Chrome. You just press the F1 button, it will take you into the new help file system, and it even contains some videos that will walk you through some of the aspects of System Platform and OMI. We also improved the engineering experience when working with object wizards. Here we are inside the IDE of System Platform 2023, and you can see I've got about 10,000 instances of this template. I can open up this template, can go and add an attribute, add a graphic to it. We can also add object wizards to that. I'm going to add an option there, and I assign the attribute and the graphic to that option. And then I'm going to check it in, and we're going to time how long it takes for that checking to happen. Now, in the bottom right, I'm also going to put an older version of System Platform doing the same check-in. And we can see in 2023, it takes about 30 seconds to do that check-in of 10,000 objects. Then we're going to keep on and keep on speeding it up a little bit faster to see how long it took in the previous version. And you can see it took about 25 minutes, so it's about 50 times faster in the new version. OMI is, of course, known for its ability to host external content like web widgets. In System Platform 2023, we now allow web widgets to be placed directly on industrial graphics. As you can see in this symbol, we have a data grid widget, a map widget, as well as a web browser widget, all living on the same symbol, mixed with all sorts of graphics in the background, as well as some scripting and custom properties. Let's have a look at runtime, and in runtime we can see all three of those widgets sitting next to another. And they all interact on the script, so if I go and select a specific county, we can see that that county pops up on the map widget and is searched on the Wikipedia browser widget. And as we click through these counties, we can see that happening as well. Now the graphic itself is still in context, so if I go and change to a different state, for instance California, we can see that all three widgets react to that, but I can still click on the individual counties inside California and navigate to them on the map, as well as show them on the browser widget. This also serves as an introduction for the new data grid widget, which you can see on the left hand side. It has some built-in features like filtering, where you can specify different filter criteria, and we can add multiple criteria to the same list there. We can sort on different columns in there, and we can scroll around and change all sorts of aspects of it. We can also go and configure the look and feel, so if I click there, I can go and change the look and feel of it a little bit. I can change the background to light gray, for instance. I can change the foreground colors, I can change header colors, so I can change that to dark gray. I can change my selection colors, my hover colors, so I can make my selection background color blue, and I can make my selection foreground color white. And as you'll see now, if I select these, everything still works, but now has a completely customized color scheme. Next up, dynamic images in industrial graphics. In System Platform 2023, we've also improved the image element animation, and you can now dynamically or programmatically change the image in runtime to whatever is needed. It uses a universal resource indicator, so it can even point to an online image. We made some improvements to our alarming capabilities. Firstly, we expanded the translation capability of the alarm map. In System Platform 2023 IDE, I can create a translation file by selecting the objects, right-clicking, export, localization, and select alarm fields. Or I can use the backstage and just simply go and export the localization and all the alarm fields available to me. I can then select the options I want to, select the folder I want to, and click the export button. Now I can go and edit these translations, giving a specific translation for every one of these items in the list, save it, and I can import them back using the import in the backstage, clicking localization, alarm fields, and selecting the file for import. Let's go ahead and generate some alarms in OMI and some events, see what happens if we hit the translate button. So we can see all of those alarms and events popping up at the different alarm apps. And if I switch over to Afrikaans, we can see that the groups are being translated, the alarm comments are being translated, the event messages are being translated, and even the limit values are being translated. We also improved the granularity of alarm aggregation configuration. 
One of the other great features of System Platform is the ability to keep track of alarms. In System Platform, we can aggregate alarms across the hierarchy, and by default in previous versions, those aggregations included alarms in certain states, specifically the silenced and shelved state. What we've added in 2023 is the ability to pick which of these states should be included in the alarm aggregation. Users can choose from a combination of inhibited, disabled, silenced, and or shelved alarms. We added support for external authentication providers. In System Platform 2023, you can also utilize Azure AD as an authentication provider. Simply go to the configurator, select authentication provider, and configure Azure AD. Inside the IDE, you can now configure security to use an external authentication provider. You can then go to the roles, and if you add roles, you'll see that Azure AD roles are now listed. Add them with the plus button, and these roles will now be available as normal roles inside the IDE. You can assign IDE permissions, SMC permissions, operational permissions, and even an access level. Once you're done with that, you'll be prompted to log in, and from here on on, you can log in using your Azure AD authentication. If you've got any multi-factor authentication enabled, it will automatically be challenged once you put in your password. You'll be asked to, for instance, approve that request on a Microsoft Authenticator app or using an SMS. Of course, this also works in runtime, so inside OMI, if you click the login button, you'll be prompted for your credentials. Supply your username. It automatically recognizes the domain. It will prompt you for your password. And again, if you have any multi-factor set up, the multi-factor authentication challenge will be presented before it will log you into the OMI system. And then it will utilize the role to which this Azure AD credential belongs. But that's not the end of it. We also updated the historical playback feature. One of the neat features of OMI is the ability to rewind the action and put the system into playback mode and playing back history right there on the screen. In previous releases, this meant that every attribute you were seeing on the screen had to be historized. And if they weren't historized during playback mode, those items would not show up on the screen. Things like tag name, description, engineering units, alarm limits and the like had to be historized or they would not show up during playback. For the 2023 release, we improved that. We automatically detect if there is no history available for specific attributes, we'll switch back and show the live values on the screen. Now, this can lead to some confusion for things like alarm limits, etc., that may have been historized or may not have been historized. And to indicate that we are showing a live value during historical playback, we've got a little indicator there that's a status icon. You can modify the status icon to display something else if you wanted to, or you can just leave it off. So I've left it off for all the tag names, descriptions, engineering units here. But for the alarm limits, I'm just putting those tags on there just to make the user aware that he's looking at values that are not historized. He's looking at his historical data, but these alarm limits are not historized. We also have a new data type. Another feature in System Platform 2023 is the addition of the big string data type. In System Platform 2023, we can also now have a string type that is called the big string type. And this is a data type that provides an unlimited string. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this little script here that reads a book off the hard drive. This is what it looks like in runtime. Click the button, it reads the book, and it's 300,000 characters in that string. Read it in a couple of seconds, and you can see that it has the entire book in there. This is typically a feature that will be used for things like CSVs or JSON or XML data structures that need to be kept in an attribute. Then we also added additional security event logging capability. In order to better comply with CFR 21 part 11 in our pharmaceutical industries, in System Platform 2023, we are logging additional security information into the event subsystem. We now log an event whenever OMI starts up, and whenever a user logs in, that is also tracked in the event subsystem. And in the alarm and event history, we can see some additional information about the user that logged on. If a user attempts a login and fails in his attempt to log in, whether that failure is because he provided a user that doesn't exist or an incorrect password was supplied, we will also track a logon failure event in the event subsystem for that. We also track logout events, so when the user logs out of the system, we will track an event for that. This feature also works when using the new Azure AD authentication provider. And of course, we also track the shutdown event. Bulk engineering is a topic dear to us. In System Platform 2023, we also made some improvements to the bulk engineering tools. You can right-click objects and export to CSV, or you can find that on the backstage in the new IDE. Exporting to CSV now has several new features. The first thing you'll see is that there is now an I.O. device column that will allow you to assign assets to I.O. devices. The next obvious one is, of course, all of the wizard options are now available. 
options as well as choice groups will be listed and you will be able to set a default or override the defaults with values in there. Also settings will be available. Settings will be indicated using the link symbol there. And those settings will also be able to be overridden or you can specify the defaults in there. And then lastly, we also added the data type, integer, string, and those kinds of things to the back of all other attributes in there. So it will be easy to identify if something is a double, a float, an integer, or a string. We hope that these improvements to the CSV export will make it a lot easier to do bulk engineering in the future. Next up, some updates to the device integration objects. In System Platform 2023, we've also made changes to the OPC client that will make it easier to replace the legacy DI objects. We've added a default scan group like the legacy objects, and we've also added hierarchical paths for scan groups that can be used to replace the hierarchy of the legacy objects. We also made life a little bit more flexible for our Flex customers. In the System Platform 2023 IDE, we can see there's a platform deployed. It's got no engines and there's no problem with that deployment. I can now go and add a couple of engines to that platform. And you'll see as I add six engines there that those engines go into error. And if I click on the platform, it also shows me an error. That's because that platform has not been licensed for engines. I can, of course, use the unlimited engines, but what we want to use is the counted app engines, which is the new feature. So I can go in there. I can set it to just one engine like it was in the previous versions, which was a single app engine. And you'll see that single app engine is now enabled and ready to deploy. But I can also now go further into the counted engines and add as many engines as I want. I can put five engines down there, hit the configure button. Notice that the platform is deployed, so I'm making that change on a deployed platform. You will see that the five engines are okay, and the sixth one is in error. Then we also did a lot of work on our extensions. I already showed you the new data grid web widget earlier, but there's more. We are also shipping a new version of the content presenter with System Platform 2023. We've standardized the follow current context property, and we've also cleaned up some of the configuration properties. We've separated out the child levels and we've also separated out the navigation search options, which will now allow multi-select and also introduces a new option for siblings. We've also made the navigation start node dynamic so it can be changed in runtime when follow current context is not selected. This is what it looks like in runtime. I have a content presenter on the left hand side of the screen. It's been configured to collect content from children as well as from siblings. So when I select West, it will find all the children of the West. So it will show me all the states in the Western region of the United States. But if I select one of the states, say for instance, California, it's going to look for all of the sibling states. And those sibling states will also be in the West. So we'll see all of the Western states still there, but California will not be listed. And if I pick one of the other ones, say Oregon, in Oregon will disappear from the list. California will be back because now it's showing the siblings of Oregon. The map app is a very popular extension. The 2022 version of the map app has several new features. One of them is the ability to switch zoom layer on and off at will. A zoom layer will appear whenever the map is zoomed to within the limits of that layer, but now additionally a user will be able to switch layers off or on as they desire during runtime, and the user can still interact with these assets at will. So they can click on an asset and it will change the current asset of the application. Now one of the other things to notice, as I change the current asset, we can actually detect that because we have another feature and that is the ability to read the view app namespace. And we can do that directly so you'll see this little yellow glow indicating what the currently selected asset is. Now, this brings a whole lot of new features to us. We can, for instance, implement something like a search tool that allows me to go and search for anything that starts with M. So I can now see all the M stuff there. I can select the mountain division for the country. I can select a specific state, so I can select Nevada here. And what you'll also see is the zoom latitude and longitude is fed back. So as I move around in the map, so if I try to move down here to Las Vegas, let's put Las Vegas in the middle of the screen over there, more or less, you'll see that we now have the correct latitude and longitude in there. And we can also set things in here. So I can go ahead and specify my 32 zoom and maybe a 64 latitude and a minus 152 longitude and that should put us somewhere in the middle of Alaska. Okay, so let's go back home and just look at a couple of other features that we can do there. One of the other features we've added is the ability to configure a specific zoom level for an asset inside a zoom layer. For instance, if I were to go to Alaska and there, I can see that it zooms for Alaska to 26%. And if I were to go, say for instance, to somewhere smaller like Rhode Island, you'll see that for Rhode Island, we're zooming into 53%. We can also interact with the map programmatically. So all of these assets that I've shown you so far are part of the system platform model inside the IDE. 
but I can also dynamically add assets to the map in runtime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, show counties. And what that does is it executes a script in the background that goes and reads a database and founds out all the counties in a specific state. So if I click main here, it's going to run to the database and find all the counties in main. And it's going to put little pins in the center points of those counties. And we can, of course, delete all of these ones programmatically. So if I move over to Massachusetts, you'll see that it's adding Massachusetts, but all of the ones in Maine has now been removed. So that was just a quick introduction to the new features of the Map App 2022, now available with System Platform 2023. As always, we continue our commitment to harden the software and provide our customers with a safe and secure product that they can use with confidence. This release of System Platform also has an Enterprise Edition. This is targeted for our customers who require a comprehensive Enterprise Visualization product. For our Enterprise customers who want to implement Unified Operation Center, System Platform Enterprise now includes an OMI Web Client. The OMI Web Client includes most of the features that has made the desktop client so popular. Users can use multiple monitors, they can switch to full screen mode, and the features include things like industrial graphics, navigation, autofill, and all of the well-known OMI apps like the Map app. Of course, context awareness provides the backbone of data-driven visualization. For example, if I switch over to the southern region, everything changes to the southern region. And if I switch over to Florida, all the content will focus on Florida. That includes the Graphic Repeater app sitting on the left-hand side of the screen, which I can use to switch over to Georgia, and all of the content will focus on Georgia. You can even use web widgets directly. Here I'm using a QR code reader to switch the current focus back to Florida. In this release, the OMI web client is available for System Platform Enterprise users only and provides an awesome interface for those customers who want to implement unified operation centers. Another neat trick you can do with OMI web client is to build your own dashboards. We call them workspaces. So you go to the workspaces button, click new, and now you can create new workspaces. By creating a folder in the graphic toolset, users can get access to specific graphics and they can start building their own dashboards. So they can take a meter like that, or they can use some of these charts, like for instance, that one there. They can, of course, resize things in here so they can make things smaller and bigger as they want to, move them around as they would like to see them change. And to configure them, they can click the configuration button and it will show them the custom properties available. Clicking in a custom property, they can now search for a specific tag. For instance, if they want to put down a meter to see California's level, they can just type California.level. And they don't have to complete that. It will search for a tag and there we find California.level. And what you'll see is that value immediately goes into the graphic live, even while it's in design mode. Let's do something like the chart here. Click on the configuration button for that. And for this, I'm going to quickly speed things up. And we can see them all sitting live in the design time. I can then go and save that and give it a nice name. So these are my states, save it. And you'll find that it now sits under the list here and I can select my states and that is what it will look like in runtime. And I can now go and share this out with other users as well. The Enterprise Edition also has some unique extensions like the Microsoft Power BI app and the Aviva Pi Vision app. This release also introduces a new OMI app. The Sanki app is a handy visualization tool that allows customers to visualize the flow of materials and energy across multiple processes. It can help with the understanding of waste and how materials are used in the composition of products. That was a quick look at all the new features of System Platform 2023 and we hope you'll enjoy using it as much as we enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching.